Have you ever wanted to create your own game environment? Well, you've clicked on the right video. In this video, we've invited our good friend Justin, a professional environment artist for games, to share some tips and tricks on how he created his beautiful environment. And let's just say, Justin has blown us away and given us a treasure trove of game design knowledge. In this video, Justin's gonna take us through his entire workflow on how he created this gorgeous stylized environment. I mean, look at it, it looks like a painting. And he's sharing a lot of what he's learned with the Stylized Station community today, what a guy. Now, if you're serious about learning game art, check out our courses. We have a growing library of beginner courses on texturing, environment design, and we just dropped a brand new character design course that has over 15 hours of incredibly easy to understand lessons. Now, strap in your seatbelts and keep your hands in the vehicle at all times because we are going for a ride. Welcome to the next episode of Stylized Station. Roll the tape! Welcome to Stylized Station. My name is Justin, aka Shinkadora, and I'm a 3D artist here on YouTube. Today I'd like to give you a couple of tips and tricks I learned making one of my latest 3D environments. I'll give a general overview and breakdown that can hopefully help you make your best work in Unreal Engine 5. This project's goal was to incorporate the game-changing techniques seen here on this channel, as well as some exploration into the art pipeline of games like Genshin Impact and Sunset Overdrive. This isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial, but I'm sure you'll find some of these tricks really interesting. I'd like to thank Stylized Station for giving me a warm welcome onto the channel, and this video wouldn't be possible without them, so double check that you're subbed to both of our channels for maximum stylization. I always encourage feedback and conversations, so let me know what you want to learn more of. Sit back or take notes, and enjoy the video. The main focus of this project was to utilize trim sheets, practice my painterly 3D skills, learn about Sunset Overdrive's crazy secrets, and make something a little bit different. I used Unreal Engine, Blender, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Designer. If you want to learn from the project itself, this environment is also available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace, just look up Countryside. This is a stylized 3D interpretation of an excellent painting called Countryside by Grady Frederick, a senior concept artist in the games industry. Check his art station, because he's crazy talented. In this moody painting, I realized there isn't any one asset that would demand too much manual labor. I figured this piece would make for a great exercise in scene building without getting too caught up with any one prop for too long. That allowed me to focus on my workflow and put more effort into replicating the compositions with simple assets. However, I had two big challenges ahead of me. The first challenge was to brainstorm how I was going to interpret some of the more abstract elements of the painting so I could translate it into something digestible in 3D. The second challenge was figuring out how to take the popular Unreal Engine techniques in 3D Ghibli environments and find a way to supercharge those methods to make my worlds more painterly and texture a lot of models without needing to retexture every asset. These questions led to an interesting discovery and may have changed the way I make a lot of my environments from now on. I just call this workflow Stylized Overdrive. I figured if I give this workflow a name, you might remember the concept better. The stylized part of the title is a name for the techniques a lot of stylized environment artists use in their videos here on Stylized Station, whether it be the foliage shader and prop sculpting techniques seen in the environment survival kit, or the procedural texturing methods in the 3D artist coloring book. The overdrive part of Stylized Overdrive is the method of creating procedural trim sheets and substance designer to create extremely modular kits and assets. We also use world aligned brushstrokes with shaders and Unreal Engine to replicate the world building tools of Sunset Overdrive. It's important to know when to rely on trim sheets and shader tricks and when to use more traditional methods. It's going to have to depend on what purpose that asset serves to you. With some time invested in trim sheets and designer and shaders in Unreal, you're basically building yourself your own 3D texturing department for your one man studio. Anyways, look up Kevin Sorensen's ArtStation blog for a really deep dive into his own version of this technique. Let's look at a quick demo to see what I'm talking about. Here in Substance Designer, I've built a little template that does a little bit of everything I've discussed so far. I'm using the Ultimate Trim Sheet Generator tool by Scumbrella to quickly create a trim sheet layout of the material I want. The main point of using a tool like this is to give us a grid of panels that we can determine the size of and have control over the bevel size as well. I'm using the exact same layout as the trim sheets in Sunset Overdrive, but this isn't a hard and fast rule. We can swap every other panel with an alternative material to make prop variations as simple as swapping a texture. I'm plugging the height map into some pretty simple node setups to create the rest of the texture, and now we can see what makes this approach so special. In Blender, we can get our default cube and press reset to reset all of our UVs. With an add-on called Ultimate Trim UV, I can create a template that matches the layout of my trim layout in Designer and automatically pack the selected UVs to fit the trim. Now watch this. Let's plug the normal map into the material and see what happens to our cube. 
The two 45 degree angled bevels converge with each other and smooth out the edges of our model without needing to add a single polygon. I'll take this further and model a barrel that can be easily UV mapped to this trim sheet. Looking good. Now we can make the object look completely different by just swapping the trim sheet texture. You can get away with a ton of variation like this and that's pretty much the trim sheet method from Sunset Overdrive and we'll check out the shader part soon. Modeling and texturing my props and assets were actually the simplest part of this project, as this was more of a study in shaders and materials. The houses are just really simple low poly models that utilize the trim sheets so they could be quickly textured. These trim sheets also have those beveled normal maps so the edges will look softer too if you don't rush the UV mapping process like I did. Here's another piece I made that actually had pixel perfect trim sheets on the buildings. You can't see it, but I can, and that's what matters to me. The trees were modeled using a variety of methods because I used the time I saved from not having to make hero props to experiment with foliage authoring methods. I would probably stick with Triet to build the base of my future trees, but I would actually sculpt and bake the trunk if the tree is big enough to be considered a hero asset. As of right now, I still think manual placement of leaves will give you the best results, but making foliage is tough and I'm still looking for better ways. I like how my hand painted textures came out, and I think my next batch of foliage assets will come out even better. The animal sculpts were both made in ZBrush without a block out. I was just using Dynamesh and basic brushes to build my forms and the Z Spotlight tool for some reference. I used ZRemesher to get a quick automatic retopology and baked and textured them in Substance Painter. I am not joking when I tell you that the fundamentals learned in the 3D artist coloring book are the only techniques I'm using in these assets. Once you learn what you need to evoke texture and lighting and materials, finding tools to speed up your workflow is encouraged. Another mesh I sculpted that I'd like to show you is the cliff mesh. It's very geometrical and is intended to be as modular as possible while still having that chunky stylized rock look. This cliff was sculpted from a cube with a trim smooth border and H polished brushes. I also enjoyed carving away at some boulders as well, and just a little bit of baking and texturing in Substance Painter is all I need to complement my shaders really well. Let's talk about our materials in Designer. Designer is typically where my mad scientist comes out in the process, and I'm always playing a balancing act between trying out new things, replicating tutorials, finding my own lazy solutions, and just switching stuff around until I see something that looks good. For example, I had no idea how I was going to make the farm material. But by turning a random tile sampler into random grayscale tiles and then quantizing it, I was able to merge some of the tiles together to create some really interesting geometric patterns and use that for my base. Now if we take a look at the actual trim sheets I've been working on, they can be super intimidating to look at at first. And while it is complex, I'm using this more as a template to easily make new trim sheets with just some tweaks. This has a pretty nice effect visually too. The bevels at the edge of these trim sheets, when UV mapped to a sharp edge, will actually diffuse that sharp edge to soften our low poly objects, and it also lets us texture any object we need to at the same time. I know I wanted some shorter and sharper edge cuts on the variation material, and I also wanted to be able to use this mask to color it differently, so this is just a little setup with tile samplers to get those maps. I'm layering a lot of samplers overlapping in different directions so that I can get some natural chipping. I'm creating more samplers with different shapes like large slashes, axe cuts, small holes, and overall surface deformations, and some of these can be used in further materials. For the circular log cuts, I'm using a waveform to build the basic shape, process it a bit, then use a tile sampler to make some horizontal slashes, and use the Cartesian to polar node to turn it into a circular mess. The splatter circular node is my favorite way to get some cuts across the slashes as well. So by layering both the metal and wood together using the variation mask, we now have a pretty baller trim sheet. I gotta wrap this up by slapping colors on it. My only tip in this area is to abuse the curvature nodes, thresholds, slope blurs, and gradient maps to keep making random masks to build up your colors. One of my favorite tricks is to slam and warp a bunch of brushstroke textures I made in a different project for a cheap way to get some painterly effects. These are actually the same brush strokes that I'm going to be using for the other half of the overdrive workflow, which is making the painterly overlay shader. Designer makes for one of the best tools out there for material creation, but you can also use it to make noise textures for shaders, ZBrush alphas, or substance painter stencils. Now that we understand the trim sheets utilized in Sunset Overdrive, we can finally take a look at the other technique, which is the brush stroke shader. So the developers of Sunset Overdrive utilized both modular trim sheets and this painterly shader technique to transform their production speed in stylized world building. Oh, and I don't know where else to put this, but use this command line if you want to get rid of that ugly noise and dense painterly grass. Tag my channel in the comments if you want more Unreal fun facts. 
So here in the main master material, I've divided the graphs into a few functions. I'm basically nesting large chunks of the graph together to make more complex materials. This allows me to build myself a library of really awesome shaders that I can build modularly on a per project basis. This isn't something I see done very often, but it's become crucial to my bigger projects. So at the end, I've added a new material function called MF World Space Paint, and this works similarly to what I was talking about with Sunset Overdrive and the automatic brushstrokes. The World Space Paint function adds this global color overlay panel to our material instance, and it's given me all sorts of controls that I can use really modularly. Using the RGB channels of my two brushstroke textures, we can change the paint strength with the RGB strength sliders, and the RGB mass strength sliders will then take out chunks of that paint. We can swap our textures, and we can change the scale of our textures individually. We can change the contrast, and because they use World Space textures, no two assets will look exactly the same. And so these masks are then plugged into this formula. Instead of over explaining simple math, I would just take a good look at this and play around with it. You'll figure it out. I repeat this formula for the blue and green channels and now I have control over a ton of masks that act as my brushstrokes. Here's my gradient overlay function. That gradient is our mask between the colors we already have and our gradient color. I use the same setup to add horizontal brushstrokes across the cliffs, moss on the roofs, dirt on the bricks, and mud on the animals. Use this with other shader tricks to make some crazy master stylized shader. Or maybe I'll just make a video on doing just that in the future. So now we'll get into the final touches with lighting. I've gotten into the habit of treating my portfolio pieces like paintings, and so my lighting acts as the final brushstrokes that really define the mood and world. Here's the same introduction video without my post processing and polish, and now we'll fade it in to show you how our lighting is acting more like big broad brushstrokes of color and mood across our environment rather than limiting ourselves to real world values. It makes all the difference in the presentation, and it's made my environments go from mid to literally viral on ArtStation. The secret lighting trick in this project is my stylized fog. I created a post process material and assigned it to the post process volume, so let's make it really quick. We'll make a material called MF Stylized Fog. We're going to copy these exact nodes. Long story short, we need to allow our post-process material to blend colors, and we also need a depth buffer mask that we can change the strength of. Done. Now we'll create an actual material and set it to post-process. First, we're going to read our scene color, and then in the big yellow color one, you'll see the setup. We'll need to blend our scene color with a distance-based mask color. You can continue this chain as many times as you want. I chose five because I wanted to have a couple colors for this painterly render. Now you can make a material instance from it and play around with both the distances and colors to get really interesting stylized scenes. Now we assign it to our post process volume and change the instance to your liking. This is a really similar approach to the rendering methods of Firewatch. These are simple assets, but I can't deny just how much atmosphere they add to the overall final rendering. Once everything starts to fall into place and those final polishes are in, the overall art becomes much more than the sum of its parts. It still amazes me to see how with a bit of effort in your own assets and a couple of cool tricks, we can improve our art drastically while also getting faster at developing our own signature style. And that's the breakdown for Countryside. This script was originally 17 pages long because I have no self-control and ChatGPT absolutely crapped itself when I asked it to help me make it shorter. So if you're super passionate about 3D, then I invite you to petition for the Snyder's Cut of this tutorial. It'll be 4 hours long, crop to 4.3, and have no color. My channel is in the description below if you want to show some support over there as well. It's brand spanking new. I really enjoy talking about this stuff, so leave a comment and I'll answer any questions. Thank you again to Stylized Station. They're one of the best channels to learn 3D from, and I hope to be back sometime. Take care for now, and have a fantastic day.